Want an iron or aluminum fence to surround your swimming pool? Let's take a dive into the complicated and sometimes confusing world of getting an iron or aluminum fence that'll meet pool code and pass inspection. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. You may want an iron or aluminum fence to complement that beautiful swimming pool, or you may need one to pass inspection and meet insurance requirements. So today I wanted to go over five typical things you'll need to know to buy and install the correct iron or aluminum fence to meet pool code. Now while these five items should help point you in the right direction for what's required to meet pool code and pass inspection, you're still going to need to do some homework on your end. What confuses the whole pool code and fence thing is that there's a national pool code and then there's your local pool code. While local code is typically based off the national code, it can vary and local code always supersedes national code. The code at the local level is what your inspector or insurance company is going to enforce. So the five things we're going to review today are based off the national pool code and how it affects your iron or aluminum fence choices. Just be aware that your local code could be different from what we review today. Be sure to get a copy of your local pool code from the city to make sure that the fence you are buying will meet code and pass inspection. You can typically obtain your local pool code from your city's building or permits department. If you're unsure of any local pool code requirements, ask them directly. The person that will be doing the inspection should be able to answer any specific questions you have. Now, let's go over five typical fence requirements to meet national pool code with an iron or aluminum fence. The first item to be aware of when meeting pool code is the fence height. National pool code requires that your fence be at least four foot tall when installed. This is one where we've seen some local code differences. Local code will sometimes require a taller fence such as five feet or six feet tall. However, I've never seen a pool code that allows for anything shorter than four feet tall. The second item to be aware of for pool code is the 45 inch horizontal rail spacing restriction. This one by far causes the most confusion and can limit the height and style of iron or aluminum fence you can choose. What this 45 inch requirement is stating is that you need to have a total of 45 inches between the bottom horizontal rail and the next horizontal rail up from that. Let's take a look at a couple of our fence panels to show you what this restriction entails and how it can limit your choices of both style and height. Here I have one of our four foot two inch tall traditional grade iron pool style panels and one of my four foot tall traditional grade iron classic style panels. What that 45 inch restriction is looking for is a minimum of 45 inches between this first horizontal rail and this next horizontal rail up here. It's a way to ensure that it's not easy for a small child to climb over the fence. Our pool style panel here has a 49 inch gap from the top to the bottom. This will pass code. On our classic style panel here, we only have 37 inches from this rail to that rail. This one won't pass code even though it's four foot tall if you have that 45 inch restriction in your local pool code. Let's take a look at a couple other example panels. Here I have one of our five foot tall classic style panels in traditional grade and one of my five foot tall puppy picket panels in traditional grade. On the five foot tall classic panel, we have 49 inches between the rails from here to here. This will pass pool code. On my five foot puppy picket panel, we only have 11 inches from the bottom to the mid puppy rail here. This one won't pass pool code. Even if we go from the middle here to the top rail, we only have 37 and a half inches, and again, we won't pass pool code if you've got that 45 inch restriction. This is why it's key you scan your local pool code to see if that 45 inch restriction is in there. If your local code didn't have that 45 inch restriction, then all four of the panels we looked at would have passed code if it only had that four foot tall height restriction. However, when that 45 inch restriction is present, it can affect your choices of style and height. The third item to be aware of is the distance you leave between the ground and the fence when you install it. Unlike the more confusing 45 inch code restriction, this one's pretty straightforward and easy to understand. National Pool Code wants you to have only up to a two inch space from the bottom of the fence down to the ground. This won't restrict your choice of fence and gate, but it's one to be aware of when you go to install the fence. The fourth item to be aware of for pool code is the picket spacing needs to stop a four inch sphere or ball from passing through. Now we've seen some variations on this one between national and local codes. At the national level, they want your upright pickets to stop a four inch sphere or ball like this. Let's take a look at what I mean on one of my iron gates. Here I have one of my four foot tall hoop and picket iron gates. If I try to pass the four inch sphere between the pickets in the middle, it stops the ball and would pass code. However, on the end by the frame here, the ball passes through and it might not pass code. Some inspectors would pass this gate if the middle stops it, whereas others may fail your inspection since it will pass through that last gap. It depends on how strict your inspector is and something you may want to discuss with them directly before choosing a fence and gate. We've seen some local codes call for tighter air gaps in this four inch opening, but you'll find the vast majority of fence and gate manufacturers use that between their pickets for construction and the purpose of meeting code. 
The fifth and final items to be aware of for pool code is in regards to your gate hardware. Both national and local code typically want self-closing hinges and latches on all gates. For the gate hinges, they need to be a specialized self-closing style. This means that if you open the gate like this and let go of it, the gate gets pulled shut automatically. It's key you let us know you need your gates to meet pool code when you contact us because the standard J-bolt hinges take up much more space between the gate and post than these do. So it's impossible to retrofit self-closers if you've already installed the standard J-bolt hinges. For the latch, it needs to self-close as well when those hinges pull the gate shut. Now this can get a little more subjective for inspection. Most latches will self-close if tension is being applied by a self-closing gate hinge. However, sometimes it needs to have a magnetic catch for your latch as well. This is another place where pool code can vary a little bit and you'll want to double check. Now pool code will typically also require that the latch mechanism needs to be mounted 54 inches above grade to meet that code. Now if you have a taller 5 foot or 6 foot tall fence, this shouldn't be an issue to use any latch as you can just install it higher up on the gate. However, if your fence is only 4 feet or 4.5 feet tall, you may need to use one of these stock style pool latches. The opening mechanism for this type of latch is this small ball on top that releases the magnet below. So even if your mounting plate is down here only 48 inches or so off the ground, the release mechanism is up here and can be 54 inches or more above ground to meet that code. You typically only see this stock style latch used for pool code with shorter 4 foot or 4 and a half foot tall fences that have that 54 inch latch height restriction noted in the pool code. So there's five pool code specific items to be aware of that can affect your choice of iron and aluminum fence. I can't stress enough that while this is a helpful guide, always check your local city's pool code since that's what your inspector will be using. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenceshop.com. Want a more close up look at how those self-closing gate hinges work? Check out this video we did. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.